Hey, Saigon Sam again, September 10th, 2009. Uh, now I'd like to talk to you about uh, another basic need, which is air. Um, here in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, the air in certain places um, is, uh, is very difficult to deal with uh, because, you know, you have to realize this is an industrializing society and Ho Chi Minh City is a rather industrial intensive and I guess more importantly traffic intensive uh, city. And because of the recent industrialization here, it's unrealistic to expect that you're going to find the same uh, environmental constraints and uh, green infrastructure as you would, for instance, in a more developed country. Uh, in time, I have no doubt uh, improvements will come, but for now, you need to take uh, matters into your own hands when it comes to protecting your lungs. Uh, one of the things that you'll see uh, very commonly around here is uh, the locals like to wear a uh, face cloth, uh, which is essentially uh, kind of like a, a surgical mask or a thick towel that's worn on the face and hooks around the ears. Um, this is good, uh, you know, obviously for blocking communicable, communicable diseases such as swine flu and potentially SARS and others. Um, but it's also very important, uh, for instance, when they're riding motorbikes and they want to keep uh, large particulate pollution out of their lungs, uh, you know, and also road dust. Unfortunately, what it doesn't protect very well against, because it is a fabric matrix with holes in it microscopically, is uh, the so-called uh, sub 2.5 micron particulate, which uh, recent studies seem to suggest are more associated with lung cancer than large particles. It's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think that these big nasty uh, uh, diesel and uh, coal, uh, uh, coal effluent particles would be more dangerous for you than the really fine stuff that's put out by modern engines, but it turns out that doesn't seem to be the case. And I would encourage you to read uh, uh, whatever literature you can find from, for example, the American Lung Association. Um, but so what I like to use uh, this is a single port uh, acid, uh, actually it's an acid gas and ga inorganic and organic gas mask, uh, typically used for uh, applying pesticides or paints or uh, dealing with other organic compounds. And if you can see this, it's got a uh, basically unscrewable replaceable cartridge here on the front. I'll read this to you. It says gas cartridge for acid gases, organic and inorganic vapors of low toxicity. Um, so basically what you do, this is made by Blue Eagle, I guess they're, I think they're uh, based out of China. Um, you basically take this uh, cartridge, insert it, and screw it down, and uh, seal it up, and, and there you go. And I typically replace it, depending on use, um, uh, maybe about once a month or once every two months. Uh, I do notice that for some reason this particular mask isn't that great at filtering cigarette smoke. So if I'm a lot of, around a lot of smokers outside, uh, I might go through a cartridge in as little as a week. Um, or if, I, if I'm on a motorbike a lot more than normal, then it also is, is going to burn out faster. And you can generally tell when it's time to replace the cartridge because when you put the mask on, it's going to smell kind of smoky. And that's kind of your signal that the filter's been exhausted and you'd better change it pretty quick. Um, so the first thing I'd like to show you is how to basically put the mask on. You just basically put it against your, your nose and you want to form a good seal because depending on the shape of your nose you may need to move it up or down uh, because there's the potentially some air leaks at the top. There's always some air leaks. Uh, it isn't 100% perfect but it will help you. Um, and then you basically tie a bow in the back of your head the way that you would uh, tie laces on your shoes. Here I'll just give you a quick demo. Makes me look kind of like Darth Vader, huh? So anyhow, um, that's how it works. Now, there's a couple of flaws with these masks uh, that I should mention. The first of which is uh, you can get a single port or usually a dual port model. Many companies make uh, both models. A dual port has cartridges on the side like this. And uh, I've used both and I have much better results with a single port. Uh, the dual port allows you to run, actually, you can get enough uh, basically respiratory activity that you can sustain full speed running, which is what I like about the dual port. The problem is they're also a lot leakier, um, and the weight of the cartridges tends to pull the mask off your face, so it's really not as effective. Um, whereas the single port, being lightweight, uh, you can tie it quite uh, tightly to your face and it protects you very effectively. The only caveat being you can only run about 30 feet before you know you're gasping for air because you can only get air so fast through these masks. Another problem is 
uh, particularly with this brand, and uh, I, other brands are obviously going to vary, but the inlet ports occasionally get stuck open. And uh, so what happens is you, you exhale, and uh, the, the outlet ports open up, and the inlet port closes, and vice versa when you go in the other direction. But sometimes the, the rubber flaps don't work quite well, so you end up uh, sucking in uh, whatever toxic fumes are in the environment. And typically around here, you know, you're going to encounter uh, sulfur dioxide, um, from kind of unfiltered car exhaust, which is basically going to, you, you can tell because it's going to burn your lungs really fast and it creates actually a lot of respiratory discomfort within like seconds. Um, but that's not so common. Uh, the other things you'll get much more often uh, from motorbikes, particularly trucks, is uh, diesel fumes, which are, um, well, you know what diesel fumes are like, I'm, I'm sure. And, they're not quite as toxic as uh, NOx or sulfur dioxide, but um, they're still painful and they deposit a lot of black particulate in your lungs very quickly. And so if you get in a situation where the uh, rubber flaps accidentally stay open, you'll know because you'll take a breath and all of a sudden your lungs will be full of this toxic gas. So if that happens, and it will happen, um, exhale rapidly to basically blow it out, to blow, blow out that toxic gas and hopefully you'll also get the flaps knocked back into normal operating mode. And then once you've exhaled, um, you know, my opinion would be that you'd want to continue to breathe reasonably rapidly a few times, like, you know, three, four, or five times, just to cycle the stuff out of your lungs as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, hopefully you exercise those flaps and get them back into functioning again. The other thing you can do um, if you get exposed to a, a severe toxic blast is you can push the mask, push it against your face to improve the seal and obviously walk in the other direction. People might look at you funny, but believe me, it's a lot better than inhaling diesel. Um, and, and you will, by the way, uh, find uses for these, these masks, not just on the road, but maybe while walking uh, on the sidewalk or even sometimes inside buildings. Uh, because of the gratuitous use of metal polish and toxic cleaning agents, um, it's, there isn't necessarily uh, the awareness of air quality here that there is in other countries. It's just starting to, to kind of enter the public consciousness. So occasionally you will find people, for instance, on the side of the street, uh, spray painting, you know, they're not even wearing a respirator themselves, right? They're just spray painting a car or something, and the, the spray paint is flowing out into the environment. Um, with all the xylene and whatever else is in there, I don't know, um, acrylic. So um, you want to make sure and keep that out of your lungs. Um, so I generally uh, take it with me. Um, I, you know, you can, you can tie it around your, your shoulder um, and just take it with you. It's very simple. Uh, you know, even when I walk to the park or something, I'll do that because occasionally um, there will be some kind of toxic blast from some of the work going on. And uh, you just basically, if you smell it, exhale, untie your mask from your shoulder. You got about 10 seconds, you can do that easily. Put the mask over your nose and mouth. Uh, exhale a little bit more to, to start the, uh, the, uh, the, rubber, um, the rubber inlets uh, in the right position. Walk away from the toxic uh, emission if you can tell where it's coming from and breathe normally. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you do this, um, you'll spare yourself a lot of lung damage. Uh, I would suggest, by the way, as far as transportation is concerned, if possible, use the bus and use taxis. Um, and especially taxis where the driver rolls their windows up before you hail them. Um, because if, if you do choose to ride a motorbike, you'll find, even with a gas mask, um, you're going to get a lot of carbon monoxide, which causes brain damage. Um, and you're still going to get uh, quite a significant amount of particulate in your lungs. Uh, you know, if you're commuting, you know, typical 20 to 40 minutes each way a day, um, the mask is not going to be sufficient to protect you. I, I can tell you that from personal experience. Uh, and certainly a face cloth is not going to do you enough good to even bother with. Um, that's one of the facts of life here. You know, there's a lot of benefits to living here, I assure you. And you just have to realize that there is a long-term health cost. And I would advise you to spend a little bit of money and uh, protect yourself from those costs. And by the way, um, as far as I can tell, there are few of any places to obtain these masks here in Vietnam. I bought mine overseas. Uh, so I would suggest that uh, you figure about how many months you're going to be here or how many months until you're going to expect a uh, supply shipment and uh, take enough cartridges accordingly. 
And I would also strongly recommend that you take at least two masks in case one gets lost.